Hello, everyone. Um, thanks for joining us. I'm Max Grossman. I'm a software developer at Maxar, and I work on the UI and services tier of Hootenanny. Good morning. My name is Brian Hatchell. I'm also a UI services programmer um, working on Hootenanny and working for Maxar. And I'm Ben Marchand. I'm a core developer, algorithms developer on Hootenanny for Maxar. And it would be weird if we weren't, but today we're going to talk about Hootenanny. Um, so uh, Hootenanny is a conflation software, so let's start by answering the question, what is conflation? Um, it's just a fancy word for merging data together, um, and is the signs that show there's a lot of ways to merge as you drive. Um, there's lots of ways to do conflation, and so that kind of makes it so that this is a hard problem to solve. Um, so why don't we also try to get up to speed with a little graphic um, so what you see on the left-hand side are two data sets that might be something that we think are modeling the same, you know, actual features, and we want to merge them together for whatever our purposes are. Um, so we put them through this green arrow conflation algorithm, and what you get on the output is, you know, the merged data. Um, and so you can see with the things that end in one, two, and three, uh, if things are thought to be the same by the algorithm, they're collapsed into you know, one representation. And then if there are unique features in either of the <laughs> inputs, uh, the things that end in four, they are also carried over. Um. So why does the conflation challenge need to be addressed? Well, OpenStreetMap has built a global community of map curators at the grassroots level. At the same time, local governments and corporations have recognized the value of OSM, and they'd like to contribute their data to it. One major source of new data in the future is going to be the product of automation, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning, which is capable of producing batches of extracted buildings and roads. And because OSM has been so successful, most places covered by potential import data are not empty spots on the map, and they'll re require careful merging to not introduce conflicting or duplicate data. Okay, so what actually is Hootenanny? Um, we're rolling with conflation. It's a conflation software. Uh, and at its core, what it lets you do is you give it to uh, data sets that you want to conflate, and it gives you the output of whatever it you know, was able to merge, not merge. Um, we provide that capability uh, via a command line interface and a web application, which we'll talk about in more detail later on. We'll also show how it shares DNA with OSM and why it might be relevant and useful to the people in this room and who are watching two years from now, which I thought was funny when Maggie said that yesterday. Um, and we'll also go through the different conflation strategies, because as we mentioned, there's a lot of different ways you can try to conflate or think about conflation. Um. So how does Hootenanny attempt to simplify conflation? Uh, well, it does provide translations that can prep the data so that we can, it's comparable. Um, it will automate merging of the obvious stuff. It will mark the ambiguous stuff for human review. And then it can generate chain sets to apply these conflated results back to OSM. So what can Hootenanny conflate? Uh, when we started this project, uh, a kind of cursory search uh, in tag info stats showed that uh, over 80% of OSM data consisted of features tagged as either roads, buildings, or points of interest. Uh, so we chose those as the kind of the first features that we were gonna look to support. Uh, but since then, we've made attempts to conflate other features such as power lines, waterways, railways, and general area features. Um, so again, the prerequisites to conflation. Uh, we talked about conflation being merging. Uh, before you can merge something, you need to be able to match it and before you match it, you need to be able to compare it. And so when we're doing comparisons, we always want it to be apples to apples. So those translation scripts that I mentioned, um, we also use uh, OGR to do file format changes, help us get the data in the OSM data model, meaning nodes, ways, and relations, and the OSM tagging schema, you know, the conventions for tagging. Um, so that's how we prep data that might be in different file formats like GeoDatabase or a shapefile. Uh, might be in uh, different you know, schemas or data dictionaries. Um, and the reason we chose OpenStreetMap uh, was because the data model provides a connected topology uh, that allows us to conflate multiple layers at once. 
Uh, and then the extensible tagging schema lets us or handles many different feature types. Um, even if they're not commonly tagged in OSM, we can add tags to represent them. Anyway, so that all of that shared DNA with, with uh, OpenStreetMap makes OpenStreetMap data, you know, an obviously suitable candidate for for conflation using Houdini. As a core command line curmudgeon, uh, I deal essentially with a command line, and it's great. We can. Uh, it's the first interface and can be linked to other software and, and run um, to help others. Um, <clears throat> simply done, Hootenanny, to conflate, we give it the obvious command conflate. And then um, <clears throat> we, we uh, have two, the, the two inputs are the reference, um, that's gonna be your, your golden data set, uh, your OSM, what you're trying to pull in is going to be your secondary, right? That you're gonna merge into your primary data set. Uh, as you can see on the, on the right side, we've got some OSM XML uh, that has been conflated and we actually add some extra tags in there uh, to help us to see what has been and has not been conflated. So we have a hoot status tag, uh, given a value of one for the reference data set, two for the secondary data set if those uh, like in, in Max's illustration, didn't merge and they come through into the final output data set. And then finally, the conflated gets the uh, status of three, as we see there in the, uh, the first uh, way there, that it was conflated and merged. And now we can go through uh, the web interface for our web interface curmudgeons. I'm just trying to be, keep it growing. It's early in the morning. Um, so anyway, the UI itself is just a fork of the ID editor with custom UI that you see on the left-hand side that helps you decide the type of conflation you want to do, your inputs, all that good stuff. Um, the services tier is written in Java, and it implements many of the same you know, API endpoints and calls that you'd expect if you were talking to the Rails port, the actual OSM API so that an app like IDE can understand and be able to do the inter same sort of interactive editing that you're used to in ID uh, in the app. Um, the data sets also persist in the same flavor or sets of tables that your nodes, ways, and relations do in the Postgres database that's as part of the Rails app. If you've ever looked at that really long structure file, I think it's called. Um, and it's also a client, this app, uh, of OpenStreetMap, so if you were to have an instance of Hootenane running, you would just be able to say, log in as me and Jason, don't log in as me, but I could log in as NJ Surf, uh, just like I do in Tasking Manager and those apps. Um, so I'm gonna go through a simple example of what it would look like if you were to use the interface. Um, so you could upload the two files you reference in secondary that you wanna do your conflation with, um, set the parameters for the, you know, the tweaks of conflation, we'll talk about all the, more of that a little bit later on. Hit conflate. Um, it's looking a lot less pixely than I remember, which is good. Um, it's conflating. Uh, and it looks like there was a review, so something that we can have some user input to actually, you know, take the post, post conflation output and, you know, be part of the, the merge ourselves as the user. Um, here, this point, so just to describe the data super quickly, the point had some address information for the GW hospital that was not on that hospital, and in the conflation, we would like that to be brought into the hospital, so I'm going to merge that point into the hospital, and amazing, not that amazingly, but pretty cool that the address point data for the uh, POI is now on the polygon. Right, so we mentioned earlier that uh, Hootenanny has different conflation strategies. Um, and these strategies are really just canned groups of the Hoot Conflate command options uh, that we've labeled to reproduce uh, desired conflation behavior. Um, so I'm listing them here, I'm gonna go through them, but I tend to think of them, you need to know your data before you attempt to conflate it. Uh, and so then you would use these strategies the way you might use an opening gambit and rock, paper, scissors. Uh, of which the scissors sandwich is my favorite, which is throwing paper, scissors, paper. So reference conflation. This is uh, the most commonly used in Hootenanny and what I would say is the truest form of conflation. 
This is when you have two rich data sets and you want to merge them together and get the best geometry and the most complete tagging uh, that those combined data sets can provide. Um, so this screenshot is showing uh, a before and an after of an address data set from the Commonwealth of Virginia and a, a buildings data set from Arlington County, Virginia. Um, so when the conflation runs, like you might have seen earlier, uh, merged features show up in green. Uh, and then just like with those Hoot status tags, uh, Features that came through unmerged uh, reflect uh, their origin. So pink, pink features came from the uh, reference data set, and orange features are unmatched features that came from the secondary data set. So looking here, a little closer detail at the results, um, we see a bunch of merged buildings. All of the point addresses uh, have, tags have now been applied to these building um, areas. Uh, we see a bunch of pink buildings that did not receive address tagging but we can see that these are all garages or uh, sheds in the back of the yard. And, and so this conflation result looks good. I mean, we're happy with this. So Max mentioned before, different things can trigger a review. That's basically when uh, the matcher that's, that Ben will talk a little bo bit more in detail about uh, had a score that was high enough to not be a miss, but uh, was basically not high enough to be a merge that we automatically merge. So this review is talking about multiple matches. So we can see here a, poly a building polygon that has multiple address points in it. Um, and so in this review, uh, you know, the users have to say, okay, I can subdivide this building uh, you know, by the kind of walls I can see between them, and then uh, I can have a distinct building for each of these addresses to populate. Uh, with a manual merge process like Max showed just earlier. Uh, this is another uh, review with multiple matches, but in this case it's a little different. There are two address points in this school building, um, and that's because the school borders two, two roads, and in this case uh, you would just research what's the official address of the school, uh, merge that point, and then the other point, uh, you could keep it if you just wanted an address point in OSM, or you could delete it, and it would not be in your conflated result. And then that review, review you could mark it as resolved. So going on, with Hootenanny can be an iterative process. So in this case, I now have an Arlington Buildings data set that's got uh, address data populated, and I can pull another data layer from OSM. In this case, I use an overpass query to pull buildings for the same area and try to merge those two. And that way, I might get some updated building footprints um, from Arlington County and some new address information. Uh, so here's the result there. There's a lot of green, but there's also some orange and red left over that uh, might you know, represent either unmerged things that were truly not, not matches, or they could represent uh, some reviews that we have to process. Uh, so here's one, one result that caught my eye. Um, in this case, it, it wasn't a review, I'm just showing you a before and after. But if you look in the center of the map, there's a building polygon that goes from a small square to uh, a larger square. And that's, uh, I don't know if it's showing up well there, maybe not as well. So the pink is the OSM data and the orange is the Arlington data. And what we're seeing here is uh, the Arlington data reflecting a home renovation that was done. Um, in the imagery, you can see uh, the house is much larger now. And uh, that's a case where Hootenanny, the default rule for building mergers is it's gonna look at the complexity of the building, meaning the number of nodes that make up the building and choose to keep that. Um, again, we have multiple matching and merging strategies, but that's the one for reference conflation. So that's an exception to the behavior when you're keeping the reference data for either the geometry or the attribute when you're conflating data in. So another thing I noticed is there's a new geometry here. It's an orange building in the upper right. Um, and this caught my eye because I said, wow, that's, that's pretty prominent. Um, why wasn't that in the OpenStreetMap data? And so what this revealed to me is sometimes there's a danger in conflating, you know, using overpass to only pull a subset of the OpenStreetMap data. Um, in this case, I can pull in the OpenStreetMap tiles, and I can see that, indeed, there's already a feature in OpenStreetMap. This one is tagged with power equals substation. Um, and so even if I did have that data in Hootenanny, I don't think there would have been a review because it's looking for buildings uh, 
You know, it just doesn't, it just doesn't match uh, coincident features if their tagging doesn't have any similarity. Um, but again, I can use other ancillary sources to go in and see what's going on here. So if you bring up, bring up Bing Street Side, I can see that, um, okay, this is definitely not a residential building, uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's definitely, I, I would say that it could also be tagged as a building that's maybe also a power substation. And if you do a little more research, uh, you realize that that's owned by the Washington Metro, Metropolitan uh, Area Transit Authority, uh, which operates the Metro Rail. And so that um, substation is um, used by the Metro Rail that's running between the uh, Interstate Highway to the north of this screenshot. So another form, another strategy of conflation uh, we call horizontal or cookie cutter. It's the same as the reference, but in this case, if you have two data sets where one is known to be better in every way than the other one, what you would do, uh, but the other one, the more coarse data might have a larger extent, is that you would go and uh, clip out everything in, uh, in the coarse data so that you're not even worried about doing matching in that area, and then your conflation process kind of becomes an edge match uh, exercise um, along the clipped border. Um, differential. So differential is a form of conflation where we don't want to modify anything in the existing data. We just want to look for the new features. Um, if you attended any of the Facebook talks yesterday, you saw that's their approach to bringing in um, machine learning streets and Microsoft buildings. Um, and so that's, we support a flavor of conflation uh, that we refer to as differential. So differential with tags, that would be when I want to pull in the new features, but if I have a match, I also want to transfer and merge tags to my existing features, but I absolutely want to keep their geometry. I don't want to modify their geometry at all. And then attribute conflation. So this is another form where I don't want any new features. I just want to do kind of a, you know, a spatial joint equivalent to get attributes from my secondary data source and populate those on existing features that it is able to match. Um, but you could also use this in the reverse where maybe you have uh, a machine learning derived data set that has great geometry uh, but minimal attribution and you want to take an existing data set that maybe isn't as accurate or precise uh, but capture its, its tags and, and apply them to the new geometries. Now that we've talked about it, let's get in the weeds, make some sausage um, and uh, talk about how it actually works. Um, <clears throat> in the uh, conflation process, first there's uh, translation to get them all apples to apples, then there's matching, then there's merging uh, to finally get your output. Um, so in Hootenanny, we use three different types of matching strategies. Uh, we have a, a random forest uh, train model uh, that does matching for us for um, unifying roads and buildings. Uh, not together, but unifying is the algorithm name. Um, we have an adapting, uh, adaptive scoring model, uh, which we use to match POIs and buildings, uh, building polygons. And uh, finally, we have a network uh, graph scoring model uh, that is our, our latest algorithm for road matching uh, that seems to work the best so far that we've seen. Um, and we also <clears throat> use not only the, uh, uh, the geometries for those matchers, but we have uh, matchers for uh, tags and attributes. Um, and we match on name and we use, you know, like uh, a lot of people have, have talked about, we use Levenstein, uh, we tokenize, uh, stuff like that uh, to to do our matching on names, addresses, types, uh, schemas, stuff like that. So to go a little bit deeper into our road matching with the network algorithm, um, it's based on graph theory. Uh, we take the road network and we reduce it to edges and vertices. The vertices are uh, intersections and endpoints. All other nodes are ignored within the network. Uh, and then once we find that, we match that against the, uh, the, the reference in the secondary data sets and then start to build our edges uh, together to, to form the same network. Um, and that is done uh, by finding all of the match candidates and iterative, iteratively um, expanding those matches. 
Uh, finally, when that's done, uh, we refine our match scores um, and we use uh, what we call a conflicts network matcher. Uh, and that essentially just says, does this edge support or detract from the other edge matches around it? Uh, and that will, uh, as, as you iterate through that, that pushes the edge matches to the top that are the most accurate. Uh, so you take the most accurate network with all the edges, with the high scores, and that becomes your, your set of matches, uh, and then you merge from there. So speaking of merging, uh, we have a few different uh, merging strategies. Uh, again, we talked about how uh, Hootenanny has a lot of, of uh, options, uh, command line arguments in my world uh, that you can pass in to change the behavior slightly of this. Um, so, for example, uh, uh, Brian talked about matching buildings. Um, we have a matcher, or, or merger, excuse me, that uh, takes the, the more uh, intricate building polygon and uses that one. Um, in other mergers, we use the uh, primary uh, or uh, uh, data set or reference data set geometries. Um, and also with tag merging, we have, as you can see at the bottom, our list of tag mergers and how they behave differently, uh, depending on what you're, you're looking for. Um, but we can, uh, in some cases, you want to overwrite tags. If you know the tags in one set are better than the other, you can merge them, append them together. Uh, and one special case is with names, we never discard a name. Uh, it's always either brought into uh, the alt name tag uh, or it can be flipped like that. Um, so since we went into the weeds, now how can you get into the weeds if you're using the web interface? So we'll describe uh, some user input, both pre and post conflation. Um, so the first way is what we call advanced options. And we'd mentioned that conflations are just a bunch of can groups of different command line options. Um, and this is basically a curated list of those different options exposed in a GUI. Um, so you can see here, uh, I'm doing another simple reference conflation. And uh, I'm choosing, you can kind of see uh, in terms of road related conflation options, I'm using the network algorithm. And uh, there's a search radius when I'm matching, trying to merge or match highways, that's uh, a value of one. Uh, and if you were to look on the left-hand side, that is what that would look like on the command line if you were to do this on the command line. So reviews, we, we showed you a couple examples of reviews, but now we're gonna talk how, about how they're modeled in the output. Um, a review is modeled in the output as an OSM relation. Uh, mostly our reviews are pairwise, uh, but the building uh, conflation actually can have a many-to-many, -many, but uh, you would mostly have a relation with two members. Um, and then some tags describing what's being reviewed and why. Um, I said this earlier, but reviews are those match candidates that are above the threshold for a miss, uh, but below uh, the threshold for an automatic merge. Um, and this is just an interesting uh, review that I found where basically we had two, this is back to the OSM and the Arlington address buildings data set. Uh, we had two building polygons merge, that's why they're uh, shown in green here. Uh, and then there's a pink POI from the OSM data set and the review um, says that the additive similarity score is two, um, but it didn't meet the threshold of three for an automatic merge. And so this is a building with a tag shop equals car repair and a POI with a tag amenity equals fuel. And you can see how in kind of our uh, similarity schema, those are those have weights that make them pretty similar. Um, and so the, the user could decide, hey, this is modeled fine, let's just resolve the review. Um, the user could decide to move the POI out uh, to, the, to the bottom of the building where the actual island and the pumps are. Um, and if they were perfectionists, they could also decide to split this building and mark the actual overhang over the pumps as building equals roof. Um, this is an opportunity to basically clean up this, this review that was found um, and have that, those changes be reflected in the conflated output. Uh, so this is just another showing kind of the, how the review relation looks in the XML. 
Um, again, those tags that help drive the review process, a note describing what it was, a score showing the confidence value, uh, a sort order index based on the geohash so you can kind of visit reviews in kind of a, um, a lo local fashion if there are neighboring reviews, um, and then a type that's kind of a category like this is a building to building review or a highway review or what have you. So how, how you can use uh, Hootenanny for OSM imports? Well, uh, you know, we know there's a lot of due diligence that needs to be done uh, to conduct an import, so follow the import guidelines. Um, Hootenanny is doing automated edits, meaning its conflation algorithm is merging these features, so there's a code of conduct um, you know, to make sure that you're following for that. Uh, like I said, you wanna choose the conflation type based on the, your data. You need to kind of know what data you're attempting conflate. Um, Conflate that data and resolve all the reviews, and then we have a command that will derive a change set that you can then upload um, with a command called apply change set, or you could download that and open it in JOSM where it could be validated, reviewed, and uploaded from there. So how do I get Hootenanny? Well, we have an open source GitHub repo. Uh, we have a Vagrant file that will spin up a VM uh, with all the dependencies so you can build Hootenanny from source uh, and then have a running instance. We also have a, a yum repo uh, for with RPMs for CentOS 7. So you could spin up a CentOS 7 VM, and if you, if you search Hootenanny and GitHub, you'll find our repo. If you search uh, Hootenanny and RPMs, you'll find the other repo that, that builds the RPMs, and it has an install doc that talks about how you configure uh, that CentOS box to, to use the Hoot repos. Uh, but we don't have any public instance um, at this time. So is Hootenanny something you can use? Uh, if you have a conflation challenge with an OpenStreetMap import and are interested in how, how Hoot might be useful, um, let's chat about data conflation. So thank you, yeah. Now if anybody has any questions, Yeah, we, we sure have. Um, when we started, uh, yeah, you know, there's, there's the, your ID crowd and your Jossum crowd, but you could certainly conceive of pulling in two layers in Jossum, and basically that, the way that would work is you would upload those two files to Hoot, and then you would get back a third file, and it would have all those review relations, and so the Jossum plugin would have some kind of logic. Um, we might even use the validation framework for going in and visiting all the reviews and making sure that you know those who basically validate being not warned when when you had marked them as resolved, and just use all the Jossum tools for for doing those manual merging and everything. Um, the other thing I'll mention that that when we're doing these change sets, um, we are trying our best to reuse the existing IDs of entities that kind of like the replace geometry tool in Jossum. If that's one thing you do to do kind of conflation yourself, and so. We are trying definitely not to lose the edit history of features that get conflated so that you don't see any deletes and then a new feature that's the same, representing the same physical thing reappear with a new ID. Instead, you'll just see modifications to tags, modifications to the number of nodes in a way or maybe the locations of a way. What's the uh, order of magnitude for the size of data that you recommend using this tool with? Yeah, so when we were chatting with some of the other folks that are working conflation projects, uh, this, is not, this is not trying to conflate data at scale. We're not trying to conflate countrywide data sets. Um, I think the model we thought was more of a, like a tasking manager model where you would pull a bounding box of data, run that conflation, and the idea would be who would merge all the easy and obvious stuff, and then the, the, the task for that would just be cleaning up the ambiguous stuff. So, um, you know, I... I mean, <clears throat> maybe Ben can speak. I know we've scale depends on time and hardware, right? I mean, it can do. Could it do the entirety of the United States? Yes. You just need a lot of hardware, right? Um, but the problem with that is reviews, right? If you're actually going to do a merge and you're going to have thousands, millions of reviews, uh, you know, at scale is 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 going to be tough because of that human in the loop. Uh, to verify that you, you really want if you're going to actually uh, upload to OSM. So it is a memory-bound operation. So 
Um, if you can throw more memory at it, you can conflate larger data sets. Um, and I mean, we've done hundreds of megabytes, yeah, and I don't know that we've ever done multiple gigabytes of data. Yeah, we're not, we're not using a technique that, that by itself will um, like kind of map reduce, split the data up uh, at this time, yeah. Have you considered, oh. Hi, uh, have you considered generative models for the final sort of merge and this to increase, address just the point you said is that the human is the bottle, the human review part is the bottleneck, but it's needed for the nuance. Uh, sorry, what was the first part of the question? Uh, have I said, considered? have you considered like Bayesian or generative approaches to sort of merge them? Because most of this was discriminative. Yeah, uh, so because, um, so as Max alluded to, when you're operating on this conflated output, uh, it is a, the persistence layer is a Postgres database that it's sort of like the AP, OSM API database. So you could have multiple users you know, it uses optimistic locking, so you can have multiple users working on um, the reviews uh, at one time. Um, you know, which is something you, you could certainly have a group effort, a crowdsourced effort at doing that. But I think we were thinking the tasking manager model would be instead of conflating a large area, um, because you can't tell everyone to like, hey, don't edit in this area I'm conflating for the next week, you would kind of conflate as you checked out um, tasks. Um, so that you could conflate, review, and get that turned around before, you know, the data was stale. So you mentioned the He's bringing you, Mike. Well, no, technically over time, too. Okay. You guys are willing to keep taking questions. Sure. We'll, we'll yeah, we're happy questions. to sit here, because I think we're on a break right now. So. so you mentioned that you're using this random forest uh, adaptive model. Uh -huh. How that is used in conflation? Yeah. Uh, so the the random forest models um, are used uh, in the the matching process. Um, each individual, uh, say highway, is passed in, um, and uh, the the attributes are extracted through that. Uh, and then we used a random forest model to uh, uh, to to pull out the the attributes that that. Um, most likely uh, when they're matching mean that the, the ways actually match. Uh, there's, there's a lot more uh, in our documentation on our, our GitHub website. It goes into a lot of detail of exactly how that works, but that's kind of the, the gist of it. Cool. Thank you so much. Yeah, Thanks for the presentation. Anything else? Thank you. <laughs>